Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my series on oceanography. So in this session, we are going to learn about Indian Ocean, its ocean bottom relief features and its ridge and basin structure. So before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So after we have already learned about the ocean bottom topography of Atlantic and Pacific, now it's the turn of Indian Ocean. So let's learn about the Indian Ocean. So if you see this particular map, you observe the extent of this Indian Ocean. So this is what the map looks like. Indian Ocean is basically named on India that we already know. And remember, here we have Africa, here we have Saudi Arabia, then you have the South Asian part, that is Indian part. And then on Eastern part, what we have is this Malay Peninsula, Australia, Malaysia, Indonesia, and all those areas. So this is how it is bounded. And in South, we have Antarctica. So this is how it is bounded from all sides that we can observe on this particular map. Now let's understand about the name. So the Indian Ocean has been known by its present name, that is what we say Indian Ocean, since 515, that is again going back to age of discovery, when the Latin form that is Oceanus Orientalis and Indicus. Now remember this is Oceanus Orientalis Indicus, Orient basically means East, right? And this is Indicus being Indian Eastern Ocean. This is how it was referred during Middle Ages or during Age of Discovery that we say. So that is where the Oriental Indian Ocean is the name or the Eastern Indian Ocean, right? So that's important. Now, it was earlier known as Eastern Ocean only, a term that was still in use during even 18th century, right? And remember, this is where you see the Eastern Indian Ocean in context and as opposed to what? The Western Ocean, which was supposed to be Atlantic. And this is in reference to whom? This is in reference to the Europe. So because Europeans were the first sailors and they discovered the other segments of the world, other ocean routes. So what happened? From Europe, if you observe, the West is Atlantic and east is Indian. That's how the Western Ocean referred to the Atlantic Ocean and Eastern Ocean referred to the Indian Ocean. So the ocean has also been known as Hindu Ocean in many texts and also Indic Ocean in various languages as well. Now if you go to the ancient Greek history where Herodotus wrote about it, he wrote about this particular area which is Northwestern Indian Ocean typically but from Greek side it was part of the Eastern margins, right? And it was ruled by King Erythrus. So the King Erythrus was the keyword and that's why it was called Erythrean Sea. So if you observe ancient Greek geography, Indian Ocean or specifically if you see Northwestern Indian Ocean in current world, right? It was referred as Erythrean Sea. So that is the old name of Indian Ocean, we can say like that, right? So let's go ahead and understand the ocean bottom topography, formation, geology and various other features of Indian Ocean. So first important thing is the extent part. So if you see the extent right from this Cape Agulhas right here, this point, this particular longitude to this particular Tasmania portion that is this area, this longitude. This is what you see is the longitudinal extent if you observe here, right? So this is the larger portion, right? And it can go up to this Persian Gulf in the north. This is where we say is the farthest northern point of Indian Ocean, right? So that's important to remember. Now, the borders of Indian Ocean as delineated by International Hydrographic Organization. Remember IHO, right? So in 1953, IHO included Southern Ocean, but not the marginal seas along Northern Rim. Now remember, they included this Southern Ocean but they did not talk about the marginal seas alongside it, right? So that is how they delineated first. Then what was there? In early 2000s, IHO again delimited Southern Ocean separately, which removed water south of 60 degrees south. So remember, when we are saying 60 degrees south, the waters across 60 degrees south is not part of Indian Ocean as per the latest IHO delimitation, that's to remember. So meridionally, if you see, Right? Indian Ocean is delimited from where? Atlantic Ocean by 20 degree east meridian. Now here is your 20 degree east meridian just below this Cape Agulhas. Right? That is where it runs. Running south of Cape Agulhas that we already know. And from Pacific Ocean, if you see this portion, so it is about 146 degree 49 minutes. That is where this portion is South Tasman Sea is located. So northernmost extent, we have already known, this is the Gulf area, which is supposed to be the Persian Gulf is supposed to be the northernmost point that is about 30 degree north. 
So remember from 30 degree north to this 60 degree south. This is what the extent is in terms of latitude and in terms of longitude. It is from 20 degree east meridian to 146 degree. This is larger extent portion if you observe of this entire Indian Ocean. Now let's elaborate further more. So if we talk about the origin and geological formations of this particular Indian Ocean, remember this ocean is full of ridges as well as valleys. So mountains and valley structure. So it's very similar here. We have lots of ridges that is what we know as mid-oceanic ridges and these ridges separate this ocean in, into several small basins. So that is what to remember and you can observe in this image you have Somali basin then we have another ridge here, Carlsberg ridge here, right? Then you have Mid-Indian Ocean Basin. So you have Chagos Lakadiv ridge and then you have 90 East ridge. In between there is another basin. So this ridge and basin structure. Now just remember this ridge and basin structure is the most important thing in terms of the geological formations that we see, right? of the Indian Ocean. So origin and evolution of Indian Ocean is the most complicated if you want to learn it apart from the other oceans as we see it is very simple. So again the consequence is what? It is the consequence of the Gondwana separation around 175 million years ago the breakup of Pangaea and that is how it starts to form and by the movement of northeast of Indian subcontinent beginning about 125 million years ago. So this is where the next portion comes in which began colliding with Eurasia about 65 million years ago. So remember this portion collided with Eurasia about 65 million years ago, right? So this is important to remember and by western movement of Africa and separation of Australia from Antarctica about 53 million. So this Australia was separated from this portion about when? 53 million years ago. So that's how this space in between is created roughly and so largely if you see the entire Indian Ocean Basin is less than 80 million years old in terms of its geological formation and by 36 million years ago what we see Indian Ocean had taken its present configuration. So remember 36 million years ago this present configuration as we see in terms of this region valley system or region basin system is actually 36 million years ago in current shape and remember it is still active it is changing it is dynamic it is not fixed so again Indian Ocean plate is also now changing which we have already made a video so if you want to watch that video it's already there in the playlist on ENA environmental news analysis where you see the separation of Indian plate with Indo-Australian plate so that is where it is explained right so these things are dynamic in nature so that's the larger portion which we discuss under origin and formation that is geological formation now let's elaborate further more so if you see the classification now of this region basin structure of Indian Ocean one is western zone which is between African coast and mid Indian oceanic ridge now look at this portion which is mid Indian oceanic ridge this portion is the mid Indian oceanic ridge and this is Africa and in between this is what you say is the western zone. Then what we have is the eastern zone which is kind of a deepest zone 5500 meters narrow continental shelf with steep slopes. So this is the eastern part right and then you have a central which is in between right. So this is western this is eastern and this is central very similar to what we classified in terms of Pacific. So the central zone represents mid oceanic ridges with numerous islands. So that is what is the central portion. Right? Now let's elaborate one by one and understand the features. So first one is continental shelf feature. Now when we say shelf area, it is extensive where in along Bay of Bengal, Arabian Sea, East Coast of Africa and Madagascar. This is extensive. So remember this portion along India, along the Africa, this is which is extensive shelf area. Remember, so continental shelves are narrow on the other side where we have Java and Sumatra. So this portion is very narrow in terms of continental shelf we need to remember, right? So western part and northern part have greater shelf areas and eastern have lesser shelf areas that is to remember. And on an average the continental shelves are very wide that is about 640 km in the west. So this area the average is 640 kilometers while 160 in the east so this is how much is the difference almost three times less so that is to remember in terms of the ocean configuration that is continental shelf area then comes the most important feature that is the oceanic ridges portion now if you observe this map as well right the ridges form inverted y on the ocean floor now remember if you invert y it looks something like this this is like inverted y 
right so if you observe this is the central portion right this is the southwestern portion and this is the southeastern portion that is what we say is inverted y right so this inverted y structure can be explained by looking simply into the ridge and ocean basin structure so what we observe here is that starting in the upper northwest with the Carlsberg ridge now here is the Carlsberg ridge right this portion right and it is located in Arabian Sea turning due south past the Chagos Lakadif Plateau so this is your Chagos Lakadif Plateau so here this portion turns south right mid Indian ridge is the point what we say so southeast of Madagascar the ridge branches now remember where is Madagascar this is the Madagascar area right and what happens we are talking what here southeast so this is south and this is east so there is the branching happening the southwest Indian ridge continues to southwest until it merges with the Atlantic Indian ridge so this is what we say is that from here what you have is one portion of the ridge going like this right from this place and the other portion what you see is the southeast Indian ridge tends to extend to the east until it joins Pacific Antarctic ridge so this is the next portion which goes like this right so this is where you see this portion is kind of a meeting portion right so this is from where you see it goes out in two directions and that's why we say it's like an inverted y structure so most striking is this particular earthquake free zone which is also called 90 east ridge now this is very interesting because it is located on this particular line which is 90 degree longitude right so which is the longest and straightest world ocean ridge that is important to remember so where is it located just carefully observe this is that particular ridge the 90 east ridge that we say which is kind of a straight line right so that is also important to remember and it was first discovered in 1962 it runs northward along 90 degree east meridian and hence the name is 90 east ridge and it covers 4500 kilometers so remember this is 4500 kilometers of a straight line of a ridge line that's important right now let's go further more when we have learned about ridges obviously between the two ridges what are these western and eastern basins that is the larger division that we say and further we have the regional divisions as well so what we say mid indian oceanic ridge now this is what we see is the mid indian oceanic ridge the central ridge it divides into eastern and western basin one way to divide it and further it has been subdivided into several other basins so which is oman basin so where is your oman basin remember this is the northwestern basin whereas you have oman basin then arabian basin so arabian basin is just south in arabian sea part right Carlsberg ridge divides into somali basin and arabian basin so we have somalia basin close to the somalia here right so somalia basin is bordered by sokotra chagos in the northwest right and then what we have is the central ridge in the east so this is central ridge and this is in between the somali basin right and the average depth here is 3600 meters then what we have is mauritius basin right so mauritius basin is here somewhere right so this is about 6400 meters and other basin like muscarine basin madagascar and seychelles mauritius ridge portion so you have this madagascar basin then you have crozet basin then mozambique basin all these places you observe are the larger portions of what we observe as the lots of basins now where you see west australian basin is part of the eastern indian ocean and south australian basin so west australian south australian basin and in between you have perth basin as well and then here is the broken plateau so this is the basic ocean structure or ocean basin structure or we say ridge and basin structure and if you see largely the central ridge is the dividing line which goes like this so from central ridge what you observe is this central line then you have southwest indian ridge and southeast indian ridge so this is like inverted y which we were talking about and this clearly divides into several sub basins right so this is important to remember let's look at the deeps and trenches in indian ocean so above 60 percent of the indian ocean consists of deep sea plains and depth ranging from 3600 to 5500 meters so if you observe this deep sea plains in between these plain areas are between 3600 meters to 5500 meters and if you observe deep sea plains name wise it is somali abyssal plain so remember where is somali area right then 
Ceylon abyssal plain. So this is Ceylon abyssal area, right? Between these ridges, flat areas, and then Indian abyssal plain. So Indian abyssal plain is in the center, this area, right? Then significant trenches, namely Sunda Trench, Diamantia Trench, then you have Mauritius Trench, Vima Trench, Chagos Trench. So observe these trenches are important places, and you see this particular area, you have Java Sumatra area. So you have Sunda Trench, Java Trench here. Right? Then what we have is this particular Diamantina Trench and then near Chagos Trench what we have is the Viama Trench. So these are larger or bigger trenches that we observe in Indian Ocean. Right? So this is important to remember and its maximum depth is more than 8000 meters. Now remember 8000 meters is this Diamantina Trench that we see. It is located in the Western Indian Ocean nearby the coast of Australia and Diamantia Deep that is the name for diamond is given the name to this deepest part of the trench and remember it is about 8000 meters deep here right so apart from the other trenches that we say Sunda or Java Trench here Chagos and Vema Trench here this part that is the Diamantina Trench is the deepest trench in Indian Ocean. Then next feature you see is the sea mounts. Remember sea mounts are the volcanic features and many times they are eroded and they have flat topped which are submerged in the water. So these are certain sea mounts that we see and what are the names of the Barden, Collar, Nikitin and Williams. So Barden is near Madagascar. So this is area for Madagascar, right? Barden Trench. Then you have Collar and Nikitin. So you see Collar Sea Mount. Then Nikitin Sea Mount is near this mid Indian Ocean Basin. Then you have William Sea Mount. So William Sea Mount is here. So all these portions have this particular sea mounts and they rise abruptly from abyssal plain to heights of almost 1000 meters, that is 3300 feet above ocean floor. And in the Indian Ocean, sea mounts are particularly abundant between Reunion and Seychelles. Now remember, this is Reunion and this is Seychelles. So here is the portion where you have lots of these sea mounts located and also on the Weaning Mins group near Wharton Basin, right? So this is one of the names that is to be remembered, this Weaning Mins group near Wharton Basin. So where is this? This is here, this portion. So here in these two portions, you have lots of sea mounts as well as what you see in the southern part as well. So these are larger distributions of the sea mounts across Indian Ocean. So now, when we have learnt in details about the Indian Ocean, its various topographical features, various reliefs, trenches and so many other features, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on oceanography. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep watching.